This video will take a look at a couple of examples where vector talk optics could be used kind of as an enhancement to vector talk view SE or vector talk view site edition. And site edition, of course, is the larger um, HMI, distributed HMI um, application from Rockwell Automation. It could be used as a station edition, which is just a standalone HMI, um, as a networked station, which is a standalone, but interfacing with networked um, other network devices um, or as a distributed where you know it's a it'd be like a HMI server with with multiple clients connecting to those servers and there are some uh, use cases around having optics working kind of um, in concert with view SC and one of those use cases is just around um, data aggregation, which is kind of the example we see here on this screen. So got kind of two simple architectures just to kind of show as an example. You know, um, both are very similar um, in what they're doing. Uh, this first one here is, is just, uh, you know, we can use optics to kind of aggregate information from various sources, such as OPC UA devices directly, or, you know, of course, Rockwell controllers, or third-party devices, or you know, even MQTT and, and other types of things like that. You know, we know from working with optics that optics, you know, has a lot of capability um, to bring in you know various data sources. Whereas VUSC doesn't really have that capability um, without some sort of um, you know middleware such as such as a, a Kepware or Factor Talk. Um, links gateway, or in this case, we could consider using optics to do that. Um, so in, in this situation, you know, optics would be running, you know, locally somewhere. It could be on the same server. It could be on a skid out there, um, gathering information from the various devices, and then using OPC UA to send data into VUSC. And the, the little um, missing link here is the VectorTalk Links OPC UA connector, which comes um, with VectorTalk VUSC. The other um, architecture is just a similar approach, except for, you know, this is more of a SCADA look or a machine to machine type of situation where we might have, um, you know, multiple SCIDs out there uh, gathering information from multiple sources. And there may be some use cases where you might want the, you know, from unit to unit or machine to machine to communicate. And you could do that with OPC UA between optics, um, the optics devices. And then each of these optics um, applications would be sending OPC UA data up through that OPC UA connector and into VUSC. So those are kind of two potential um, use cases there. Now, um, Let's go ahead and uh, and take a look at um, get the oops got to get out of full screen. So let's go ahead and take a look at the OPC UA connector and how we use that. It's really straightforward um, and pretty easy to use. If you're looking for any kind of documentation around it, it would be found in the Factor Talk Services um, platform um, help file. So if you opened up uh, such as like Factory Talk. Um, if you opened up the um, Factory Talk Administration Console, hit Help, you get this right here. And there is a full section here on the OPC UA connector with um, a lot of details and some examples on how to um, how to use it in some you know particular use cases and even some diagrams as to how you might connect things. So uh, always you know reference the uh, the help file. So to get this going, um, two pieces, right? We're going to use optics first just to be an OPC UA server. So we're going to generate some data here inside of the optics application. And we're going to use um, the same thing I've used a few times where I've, I've just used the, the variable simulator that comes in the template library. So there's a, a variable simulator that will create a sine wave, cosine wave, and a ramp, um, you know, of waveform um, and I created two instances of that simulator. So I got simulator one and simulator two. Then I uh, took that data and I mapped it into my model folder. So I created a sim one 
in a SIM2 folder. And I put, you know, sine one, sine two, ramp one, sine two, cosine two, ramp two. So all I did was took that data from the simulator and um, organized it in the model folder or contextualized it, um, but basically put it into my own structure that will now get sent out over OPC UA. You can, of course, structure that data however you, however you want. And the next piece to this is to set up the OPC UA server. So to set up the OPC UA server, we would essentially right click on OPC UA and we would say new server. And that'll give us uh, our OPC UA server that we see here. And uh, we just have a few things to set up. Uh, the endpoint, which in this case um, is showing as local host with a port 59100. Um, we're going to keep that as is. And the other thing you have to create at this point is the nodes. Um, you would have to uh, hit the plus symbol and um, add the, uh, you know, the node that we're going to publish. Essentially, we're going to publish the model folder. So whatever is inside this model folder, the SIM1, SIM2, this structure, this is what's going to get um, sent out on OPC UA. Um, and for example purposes, I'm going to go with the anonymous user and I'm going to go with um, pretty much all the security and certificates turned off just to kind of keep this simple for just testing and demonstrating. Um, the other thing that you can set up here are the number of connections that you allow um, to the OPC UA server. I'm going to set mine to two and um, just so I can have, you know, a, a little... Um, OPC UA uh, client also kind of connected to, to see what's going on. And then the maximum number of subscriptions per session will be set to 10. That's default, but you can change that setting if you want. And that's all there is to do to set up the, the, the OPC UA server and optics. Um, point to the reference where the data is going to come from and set up some of these, um, you know, basic, um, you know, just some, some of these basic properties around um, number of connections and security and certificates. So let's go ahead and start the, uh, the emulator so I can get my OPC UA server up and running. So again, the uh, all optics is going to do is going to generate a sine, cosine, and ramp wave, and I have two instances of it. So I have, you know, again, simulator one, simulator two. And I just try to offset it a little bit just to see that the numbers are, are different. All right, so that's our OPC UA server, essentially, now running in the background. And like I said a minute ago, I could use a little test client. Um, so I have Softing's OPC UA client also installed in here. And if I wanted to, I could just verify and test that I am getting some information. Um, so kind of have it already set up and saved. All I'm doing is pointing to the uh, opc.tcp colon slash slash localhost colon five nine one zero zero. That's the exact same link um, <clears throat> that was inside of optics there. Everything is local to this same machine. So we're going to, we could use localhost here for these examples. Otherwise you would just put the IP address of the uh, OPC UA server. And the point of this was just to show that, you know, here's our sine one, cosine one, ramp one, and then two, uh, you know, simulator two values as well, and we are getting data updating from the uh, from the uh, OPC UA server. If you know, just to show, if I were to stop simulator two, we see here that simulator two data is basically now frozen, not updating, where simulator one still is. So we'll go ahead and start it back up again, and there it goes. All right. So just proving that we can make that connection. Now, on to uh, Fire Talk View SC. So, just to save a few minutes, I've got a View SC project already created and open here, but nothing has been done to this. It's just the the beginning shell of the project. Um, no screens have been developed. No communication data servers have been developed. So, um, again, the what we want to see here is we want to use the the Factor Talk Links OPC UA connector, and how do we use that? So, so in, uh, another thing to note is I did go ahead and create mine as a local 
station edition. So I'm just using this as a station. And again, everything's on the same machine, so I'm making everything local, uh, just to kind of keep it somewhat simple. So to use the OPC UA connector, we're gonna uh, come up here to the project names. The project is called View SC Station. I'm gonna right click, and I'm gonna say add a new server. And we're gonna say OPC UA server, which is gonna be the Fagger Talk Links OPC UA connector. Now note our other options here is we can create a device server for Rockwell devices. So that's a Fagger Talk Links connection. We could set up an OPC DA server. Um, but we want to use the OPC UA server because that's what uh, Optics is going to uh, use. In fact, it's, you know, Optics is using an OPC uh, UA or is an OPC UA server. So we click on that. Um, this will open up the connector properties. You can give your connector a unique name. It defaults to connector one. Um, I will leave it at that and um we have this uh you know where's the uh, server where's the computer that's that's uh ho hosting the server and again since i'm using the uh the local station edition this is grayed out so it's going to be looking for something here on the local host uh, next we come to the opc ua servers tab and now this is where we will define our server information so um yeah, the server name it's OPC, it's ua server 01 we can give it a description you can of course change the name as well um, i could call it optics you know or whatever it's coming from i'm going to leave it default um, and then the next piece is the endpoint url so once again that is going to be our um, right here that's our endpoint url i could type it in or if i wanted to i can come back here to optics and i can copy it and we'll come to um, our endpoint URL and we will paste it. Um, again, I'm not using security for anything here, but you do have the ability to, to add uh, all the, the, the different security levels, uh, encryption methods. Um, I'm gonna use the anonymous user, but you could of course create uh, a username and password to require you to, con to uh, you know, get connected into the OPC UA server. That would have been back there in Optic. We would have defined um, the username and password. The data update rate we can use, um, you know, either we could define our own or just use what the, uh, you know, what's coming from the server. Um, and then um, the other thing you could consider doing here is enabling the alarm and event support. So if you check this box, and then the priorities box, essentially this will um, place the, uh, will feed the, um, you know, the alarms. If you lose connection to the OPC UA server, it'll put this into the VUSC alarm uh, summary um, as an alarm coming in. And that's pretty much uh, all you got to do to configure it. Uh, I'm going to hit and hit apply. And when I do that, we're going to see that we're going to get a little um, dot here and it starts out red, but then it quickly goes to green. So green means that we are connected. So USC is now connected to the optics OPC UA server. And I can say, okay. Now, when that happened, we, uh, we got this uh, connector one got added right here and there's my UA server zero one. So if I wanted to double click on that, I can get back to the configuration that I just had. If I need to change something um, and look at some of the other tabs here, which we don't really need to, uh, to look at right now, just to configure anything. But if you need to kind of do some troubleshooting and looking at stuff, you could get to it right here. And notice that the green dot is there. So we still got our connection. So now to, uh, to use you know, those tags that are coming from uh, optics, uh, if I were to go ahead and create some sort of display here, and if I were to, you know, put some uh, some device on the screen, such as a numeric display. Well, if I go to tags, um, and 
maybe I'll do a refresh here real quick. So here's connector 01. Oops, uh, sorry, let me uh, cancel that. Oops, do this again. Go to tags. I didn't mean to hit the plus symbol. I wanted to uh, double click. I wanted to click on connector one. Here's uh, OPC, Here's the UA server 01. And now we have our OPC UA server. We see our model folder. And there's our SIM1 and our SIM2 folder. Um, could click over here as well. So SIM1, there's cosine 1, ramp 1, sine 1. And if I go to the SIM2 folder, cosine 2, ramp 2, sine 2. All right. So if I wanted to, uh, you know, if I want to display the sine value in this numerical display, so there's my, my basically my string of how to, you know, route to that tag. I'm going to hit apply and hit OK. And then now, if I were to actually fire up um, View SC, the, uh, the client, uh, we would be reading live data uh, from that sine wave. Now, one other little thing to show is that um, something that comes along uh, when you install FactorTalk View SC is you do get a little FactorTalk Live data test client. So just like we had a um, a test client here um, with OPC, you know, with the Softing OPC UA test client, which I'm going to go ahead and shut down. I'm going to go to the, um, I'm going to choose local because I made this a local, um, you know, local uh, station edition. So here's our um, View SC station. That was the name of my application. I'm going to say OK. It says, you know, create a group. I'm going to go ahead and leave it all default at group one for right now. And then we can see here connector one, UA server zero one. Uh, go to the OPC UA server. There's my model folder. Here's my sim one. There's my cosines, uh, cosine one, ramp one, sine one. So I could go ahead and add these devices. and say OK. And then uh, right here is our value updating from optics. So, um, so Rockwell does give you a little test client that you can actually open up and just see data, you know, the data moving. Or you could, of course, use a, uh, a third party OPC UA test client such as softings or you know there are several other uh, opc ua ones out there that you could work with so again just wanted to show that uh you know how we go about using the opc ua connector uh basically in factor talk view sc we're just going to come up here and create a uh, add a new opc ua server now we could come back to connector one and uh if you know we we could actually add an additional server uh, if we wanted to a server two so you know we can add more than one ua server um if you want to and then uh, we'll go ahead and delete this guy um so so we're not just bound to just one um coming from, you know from one optics and that kind of gets us back to you know when we go back and look at our picture here you know here we have three you know three separate optics applications each acting as an OPC UA server. So, you know, this Factor Talk Links OPC UA connector would have, you know, one connection here, uh, another server connection here, and a third server connection here. So we can do multiple or we can aggregate into one uh, single.